Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bold and Beautiful podcast, where we are discussing all things bold and beautiful. I'm your host, Amanda, and I've decided to name this week's episode An Impossible Decision. I hope all of you had a great Labor Day. This week was very interesting for me and very busy. I had to prepare for a hurricane slash tropical storm, but luckily for us, it just missed us and we didn't even lose power. So that's amazing. Um, Hurricanes are no joke, guys. Moving on. I am wondering if anyone out there is interested in me recapping season one of The Bold and the Beautiful, the first episodes. I have been thinking about doing this, but I wasn't sure if anyone would even want to listen or be interested in that. So, um, you guys let me know. One more thing. In case you missed last week's episode, I have added a donate button to my website. This is my very first podcast, and I did not realize that running a podcast can get pretty expensive. So, I would appreciate anything that you wanted to give. I really feel uncomfortable asking for money. So that is all I'm going to say on that. If you want to get in touch with me or you want to donate to the podcast, please visit my website at theboldandbeautifulpodcast.com. Now, moving on to news. Congratulations to Lauren St. Victor and his wife, Shay. They had a beautiful baby boy, which they named... Christian Lavelle St. Victor. So congratulations to them. And that's all the news I have this week, guys. That's enough chit-chat. Let's get to the recap. Okay, so that brings us into Monday, September the 3rd. The show opens at Steffi's house. And Liam and Steffi are so relieved and happy because Kelly's fever is finally gone. Steffi tells Liam that soon he will be pulling double dad duty and Liam assures her that he will still be there for her and Kelly always. Now we head over to the cabin and poor Hope is freaking out because she is having pains and she's spotting. She needs to go to the hospital immediately. So Hope calls Liam to tell him what's happening. And Hope lets him know that she can't wait and she's headed to the doctors right now. And Liam assures her he will meet her there. Hope is so scared for her baby and I do not blame her. She's already went through this once. Back at Steffi's house, Liam hangs up the phone and tells Steffi there might be something wrong with the baby. And he runs out the door to go meet Hope. And Steffi seems concerned. Now we head over to Katie's house and Thorne is there. And Katie tells him that she really want, she really doesn't want to go to battle with Bill. And Thorne asks if she's having second thoughts about the custody. And of course she is. Katie says that she's having second, third, and fourth thoughts. But that she's doing this for Will. And she's tired of him being hurt. Then Thorne assures her that he will be there for her and Will, no matter what. And Katie's worried because Bill plays dirty. And Thorne is super confident. And he's taking Bill's threats not serious at all. He's not taking the threat serious enough. And I can tell you, that is a mistake. So Katie wishes that Bill could see Thorne the way she sees him. But that's never going to happen. I'm sorry, it's not. And Thorn Thorn seems to think that this custody battle will open Bill's eyes and make him a better parent, but I don't I just don't get that. How will that make him a better parent when he will only get supervised visits? Um this makes no sense. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. So Katie thanks Thorn for his support and she lets him know that she couldn't go through this without him. And then she asks him why he loves her. Thorne laughs because he thinks this is a very silly question. And he says that he would love her 
with or without Bill Spencer in her life, but preferably without. And then he adds that the bonus of all this is to teach Bill a lesson, that sons are to be cherished, not ignored. Okay, I'm sorry, but how is this Thorne's place to punish Bill? Not to mention Thorne is very much projecting his own feelings onto the situation. Because if you are newer to the show, Thorne has always felt like the second-rate son. He's always felt like the ignored son. And he's always had it in his mind that Ridge is the number one son and the most adored and the favorite, which honestly is not that far from the truth. Um, Ridge was their mother Stephanie's favorite. But he shouldn't be projecting his own feelings onto this situation. So, um, then they start making out and Katie grabs his hand and leads him to the bedroom and they finally make love or are intimate. And now they're cuddling and having pillow talk afterwards and Katie tells Thorne that he's good for her and her life and that if he lets her, she can be really good for him too. Back over at Steffi's house, Wyatt and Sally have stopped by to see Kelly. And Wyatt mentions that he tried to call Hope and Liam multiple times, but they didn't answer. And then Steffi explains that they're busy right now, and she tells them what's going on with Hope and the baby. Wyatt is very upset and very worried. They all are, really. But Wyatt especially because of what he went through with Hope already. In case you're new to the show, Hope was pregnant with Wyatt's baby. It's a long story. But Hope got pregnant with Wyatt's baby, and then she had a miscarriage, and they both took it really hard. So no one wants to see Hope go through this again. And Wyatt starts pacing, and he really wants to call Liam, but he doesn't. Now we head over to the to the hospital in the doctor's office. Dr. Phillips is on her way in to see Hope and Liam. It's Labor Day, so she was not at the hospital. And Liam questions Hope about what happened. And she explains that nothing happened. She just all of a sudden started spotting and cramping. And I really feel sorry for Hope because she is so scared and Liam is too. Liam explains to Hope that Kelly is okay. The fever's back to normal and that Hope needs to remain calm and relax and not worry. Easier said than done. Dr. Phillips finally arrives and she asks a few questions and then she starts an exam and an ultrasound to check the baby. She is looking for a heartbeat and Dr. Phillips is has a very concerned look on her face and she starts the ultrasound and she can't find a heartbeat. Hope begins to cry and freak out, and Liam is also becoming a little frantic, and Hope asked, doc- Hope asked the doctor, please tell me my baby's okay, and that's how Monday ends. So that brings us into Tuesday, September the 4th. The show opens at the hospital in Dr. Phillips' office. We pick up right where we left off, and the doctor cannot find a heartbeat. And Hope is crying. She thinks something might be wrong. And I I really feel sorry for poor Hope and Liam. So the doctor's still looking. And we're all holding our breath. I know I was holding my breath. And then we hear it. The baby's heartbeat. And everyone is so relieved. Hope is crying tears of joy. And they're both just over the moon. And who wouldn't be? Honestly, it would be so mean to make Hope go through that again. It really would. So, uh, Dr. Phillips finishes her exam and she assures them that everything looks normal and good. But, she wants Hope to take it easy for a few days. And then she leaves. Liam and Hope both sigh a huge sigh of relief. And Liam tells Hope that she better call her mom because you know how Brooke is and she's gonna be freaking out. And uh, then, of course, Hope checks her phone and realizes there's a lot of missed messages. Meanwhile, over at Forrester Creations in the executive office, Steffi is explaining everything to Ridge and Brooke about what's happening with Hope and Liam. Brooke is freaking out. 
She's very concerned. She is pacing. She's thinking about going to the hospital. And by the way, if that was my daughter, I would I would be at the hospital. So Ridge tells Brooke to stay positive and that, w- it, it, that it will all be okay. And then Brooke asked about Kelly and Steffi answers and assures her that Kelly's fine and the fever's gone. Then Steffi tries to comfort Brooke and assure her that she knows Hope and the baby are going to be okay. And that was very sweet. Brooke appreciated it, you could tell. Then Brooke's phone starts ringing and it's Hope. So Hope calls her mom to give her an update. And she explains everything and lets her know that they're on their way home and that everything is okay. Brooke is so happy and so relieved. So, Brooke hangs up, and she lets Ridge and Steffi know that everything's fine, and the doctor says not to worry, and that they're both really relieved and happy. So, Steffi leaves the office, and Brooke tells Ridge that it was really sweet of Steffi to show so much concern and love for Hope and the baby. And Ridge smiles and says, of course, Steffi and Liam and Hope, They're all family. We're all a big family. And Brooke is so proud that they are making it work and they are doing what they said they would do. Being being an example for their children. And Ridge is too. He totally agrees with Brooke. Back at the hospital, when Hope hangs up with Brooke, she looks at Liam and she tells him that she was so, so scared. And then she just burst into sobbing tears. And he grabs her and hugs her, and it's so sad. Now we head over to Spencer Publications in Bill's office. Justin is a little surprised that Katie actually filed for sole custody. Aren't we all? Bill tells Justin that Katie thinks this is what's right for Will, but she's wrong. I want you to get me the best legal team money can buy, because I'm fighting for my son harder than I have ever fought in my life. Bill is furious. He admits that he was that he was absent lately, but he has been a great father before now. And he explains that all of this is because of that SOB. All of it was his idea. Then he gets that hateful look that he has and he repeats, this is all Thorne's fault. Thorne should be scared. I'm saying, Thorne, you should be scared. So Justin tells Bill that he might have to face the reality Thorn Forrester might be his son's new stepdad. And Bill does not like this. And he says, thanks, Justin. You just made me throw up in my mouth. And Justin gives Bill some advice. Bill, you need to talk to Katie again. And you need to tell her whatever she needs to, to hear to drop this case. And then Bill gets up and he takes, takes off and leaves the office. Back at Katie's house, Thorne and Katie are still having pillow talk, and Katie thinks that it's crazy that it took them this long to get together since they've known each other for so many years, since they were young. And Thorne thinks it's all about timing, that they had to go through other things to appreciate what they have now, together. Then they start making out again, and the phone starts ringing, and it's Donna. So Katie just ignores it and lets it go to voicemail. And they start making out again and it's getting hot and heavy. And then the phone rings again and it's Will. He is on a play date, but he is not feeling well and he wants to go home. So Katie lets Will know that she's on her way. She gets dressed and she leaves. Thorne stays and he tidies up their dishes and he's just, you know, tidying, tidying up the living room. And then someone knocks on the door. And guess who it is? Bill Spencer. And this is not going to go well. Thorne informs Bill that he should have called first because Katie's gone to pick up Will. And then Bill just pushes right past him and walks in and says, oh, okay, I'll wait for her. And Thorne gives him this look like, what are you doing? And he says, Bill, you really have to stop doing this. Katie is not your wife anymore. Bill actually laughs at him and says, this is not, this is not your house and she's not your wife either. And furthermore, Will is not your son. 
Okay, he's mine. So stop acting like your family. Then Thorne gets really mad. And he says that he really cares about Katie and Will. And that he will be there for her and Will as much as Katie will allow it. Katie wants to start a new life. And I will be a part of it. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, did he just challenge Bill? I think he did, and that's a mistake. Now, we head over to the cabin with Liam and Hope. And they have just arrived home, and Liam is being so sweet. He's doting over Hope, and he's taking care of her. And he's he's obviously really worried about her. And Hope assures him that it's okay, he can relax. The doctor wouldn't have let her go home if there was a problem. And then someone knocks on the door. And believe it or not, it's Steffi. She came to check on Hope and see if she needs anything and just to make sure she's okay. Which is sweet, I have to admit. A little awkward, but sweet. So, uh, Steffi puts her hand on Hope's shoulder and she says, I'm really happy and relieved that you and the baby are okay. And Hope explains to Steffi that she has no idea what happened. It was just sudden. She started cramping and bleeding. It just came on very su- very su- uh, suddenly. And it was very scary. And then they both explain everything else that happened. And Steffi tells Hope that she will be happy when she sees Hope holding her baby. And then Liam admits that he was very scared skeptical that the three of them could make this work but so far they have they've come together just like one big happy family and then hope thanks steffi and she just wants their kids to grow up together and be brother and sister and not fight and i think they all want that and i think all of us want that too i actually want steffi to find someone else and just fall head over heels in love with a new man so I think we all want them to stay friends and have a good relationship, but you can't ever completely trust Steffi. I'm sorry, but you can't. And that brings us to the end of Tuesday. Okay, Wednesday, September the 5th. The show opens at Forrester Creations in the showroom with Brooke and Hope, and they are discussing Liam and Steffi's relationship. Hope assures Brooke that Steffi has been wonderful, and she's been nothing but kind. Brooke is not so sure about that, though. Basically, Brooke just wants to remind Hope that she needs to keep her eyes open when it comes to Steffi and Liam because of their history together. I don't disagree with that. Now we head upstairs in the executive office. They are about to have a big meeting, and Steffi, Quinn, Thorne, Ridge, and Katie are all there. Everyone is very concerned for Hope and the baby, but Ridge and Steffi assure everyone that Hope and the baby are perfectly fine, and they ran every test, and everything's okay. Of course, everyone's relieved. Then Katie changes the subject, and she says she feels like she needs to tell everyone because it could be it could be a PR issue that she filed for sole custody of Will. Honestly, no one is surprised. Everyone already knows. I mean, come on. <laughs> they gossip like no one's business on this show. No one has secrets for long. Quinn asks if Katie is okay. And Katie basically says that she's doing what she has to do for Will. And of course, Thorne agrees completely. And he he mentions that Bill is not too happy about it, though. And then the door opens and Hope and Brooke come into the office for the meeting. Everyone asks Hope how she's doing. She assures them she's fine. And then Liam comes into the office a little frazzled and he apologizes for being late. And Ridge starts the meeting. He informs everyone that he has to allocate funds for the line. So basically, with the couture line, Hope for the Future, and the bedroom line, they have to decide which line to scale back and which line to boost. Which sucks for Hope because you know good and well that Ridge is going to be on Steffi's side. 
And since Steffi and Ridge are the bosses, I feel like Hope really has no chance. But Ridge wants everyone's opinion, so we go around the table. And um, everyone agrees that Hope for the Future has already launched. It's made a huge buzz. Um, the new website is bringing in a lot of new customers and media traffic. Quinn is sitting back in her chair. The whole meeting with a look on her face like she's not quite sure if she's buying all of this. And she even asked Ridge, what has brought all this up suddenly? Is it financial? And Ridge kind of gives a um, kind of a generic answer. And he says that there's lots of factors and financial is just one of the issues. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if anyone's buying this, but so Ridge lays down the law basically and he says it's either hope for the future or the bedroom line, but not both. Now we head over to Spencer Publications and Bill's office. Bill is furious. He's so upset that Katie is actually filing for sole custody. And he is complaining to Justin and telling Justin that um, he's just surprised. And he's even more upset at Thorne because he knows Katie would not do this on her own. And Bill explains to Justin that he absolutely knows this was all Thorne's idea. And he is not going to let Forrester get away with this. And Bill and Justin actually are both quite surprised because they thought Katie was bluffing. They didn't think she would really do it. And uh, Bill looks at Justin and he asks them, how did all this happen? I lost Liam. Wyatt, Wyatt barely tolerates me. And now I'm about to lose Will. I can't lose Will. This is my family and I'm going to fight for it. And then he tells Justin that he was right. His decisions have torn his family apart. And he wouldn't blame Justin if he told if, if he said, I told you so. But Justin is actually a good friend to Bill. And he assures Bill that he's not going to say, I told you so. He's going to be there for him. And he's going to have his back. And Bill's fight is his fight. And Bill says he's going, going to do whatever it takes to not lose Will. Meanwhile, down... Stairs in the showroom, Hope had to get out of the meeting because she was so upset. And Liam also left the meeting and went to find Hope. And he is trying to calm her down and make her feel better. But Hope for the Future means so much to Hope. And she tells Liam, you know good and well that Ridge is going to pick Steffi. He can't be objective. You know that. Liam agrees. He says, yeah, Ridge is not objective. But he tells Hope that everyone, including her, made a very good case for her line. But you can see it in Hope's eyes that she knows she's going to lose to Steffi. Honestly, this is BS. This does not just affect Hope. This affects her whole team. Which is a lot of people that's been working really hard on this line. Hope and her team have put so much work into it. And it's successful and profitable and it has social relevance. Hope tells Liam all of this. And just that she's very upset. And it's completely understandable. Hope is also worried that this is going to cause trouble between her and Steffi again. And Liam, being as sweet as ever, reminds Hope that no matter what Ridge decides, they are still a family and they are going to have a new little one soon and who, who will take up most of their time. And what Hope and Liam don't realize is that Steffi also followed them to the showroom. She's hiding and eavesdropping on their whole conversation. Back upstairs in the meeting... Everyone is basically telling Ridge that it makes no sense to scale down the line that's profitable for a line that hasn't even launched. And then Brooke adds also, just because it was a success in the past doesn't necessarily mean it will be now. And then Steffi gets a little annoyed. 
And she tells everyone that her dad's going to make the decision based on what's best for the business. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That made me laugh. Then Thorne makes a really good point. He tells Ridge that he looked over the budget and the projections and he doesn't see anything that would justify the urgency to do this right now. And then Ridge gives another, like, generic non-answer. And he says, it's not just these projections, it's overall. I'm, I don't know if I'm buying this. So, uh, Brooke adds that Hope for the Future has proven its success and has a huge social media presence. It should be rewarded, not punished. Steffi, who, by the way, is sitting there this whole time making faces and rolling her eyes at everyone, is, um... Typical Steffi, she's being rude, but Steffi says that this is about business, not rewards. So then it's starting to get heated. So Ridge steps in and he says, look, we are all on the same team. No matter what we decide, someone is not going to be happy. But we have to remember we all want the same thing for the company. Steffi and Brooke both leave the meeting. Thorne tells Ridge that they need to look into this more. Maybe they don't need to do this. But Ridge is not hearing it. He's not hearing it. So Katie adds that this is going to create a lot of tension in the family. And then Quinn tells Ridge that he's in a very bad position. No matter what he decides. Because he either Brooke will be mad and Hope will be hurt. Or Steffi will be mad and hurt. He's basically caught between his wife and his daughter and his other daughter, which is so true. And she says that this is an impossible decision to have to make. So a little while later, we head over to El Giardino, the restaurant, and Brooke has stopped in for lunch. And she runs into Bill, of all people, Bill Spencer. He invites her to have lunch with him. And at first she says no because she wants to be alone. But he talks her into it. And Bill asks, what did Forrester do this time? And Brooke answers, nothing yet. And then Brooke explains everything about what happened today in the meeting. And by the way, Ridge would have a complete meltdown if he saw this. He does not want Brooke anywhere near Spencer. I don't either, to tell you the truth. It, it it could cause issues. So now we go back to Forrester Creations, and we're in the showroom downstairs. And Liam is still trying to make Hope feel better, which is very sweet. And Hope finally starts to cheer up a little, and she tells Liam that he's right. This is what she's always wanted, to be married to him and to be having his baby and making a family she really wishes that she could also have her line, but she is going to be happy and thankful either way, and she's very thankful to have him by her side. And then they hug it out, and we see that Steffi looks upset, but she's still eavesdropping. And honestly, I can't quite tell if she's mad, sad, upset. I'm, I'm, it's hard to tell. And that's how Wednesday ends. That brings us into Thursday, September the 6th. The show opens at Forrester Creations downstairs in the showroom, right where we left off yesterday, with Hope and Liam discussing hope for the future. Steffi is still eavesdropping, and Hope is telling Liam that she's she is grateful. She has a privileged life, and she's very happy. The main reason she's upset is because if hope for the future gets sidelined, then all of their work and all of their giving back and all of their paying it forward and all of their helping people will also be sidelined. And this is very important to Hope. And then we see Steffi leave before they, before they noticed she was there. And Hope shares with Liam that all her life, when she hears Ridge say her name and Steffi's name in the same sentence, she always hears more than what he's saying. But Liam, she, he wants Hope to have faith that Ridge will make the right decision. 
and to stay positive. Then he says something that really made me laugh. He says, because Steffi's been so supportive, there's no way she would go sabotage you behind your back. Huh. That's, that's hysterical. She also wouldn't lock you in a gondola and steal your husband either. But that happened. Now we head back upstairs to the executive office. And the only people who are left in in the meeting is Thorn, Ridge, and Katie. So basically the meeting's over, but Thorn, Ridge, and Katie are still there. Thorn wants to know what's going on. As far as he knew, the business was doing well. And then he asked Ridge, since when do we starve one line to promote another? And Ridge claims that he doesn't want to throw too much at the public at one time and lose the Forrester creation identity, which is BS. Come on. They've had so many lines going before at once. They even had a, uh, I believe it was a perfume line. I think it was called Belief. I don't know. Crazy. Um, so then, uh, Ridge basically is not giving a, an answer that is sufficing everyone, to say the least. So, um, then Katie makes a good point. It sounds like basically it, you have to pick whose daughter is the best investment. Ridge does not like that. Mm-mm, he didn't like that and he didn't say a word. So Katie and Thorne leave the office. They go across the hall to the sod office. And Thorne tells Katie that Ridge really didn't like that last statement. And then Katie pushes Thorne up against the door and they start making out. Back across the hall in the executive office, Steffi walks back into the office to talk to Ridge. And here y'all go. I realize that a lot of people don't like Hope and there's a lot of Steffi fans. But finally, everyone can see the real Steffi. Okay? Steffi is been putting on a really good act lately to impress Liam but the real Steffi is the Steffi that lies and cheats and sleeps with father-in-laws so earlier at the meeting Steffi let everyone know that because it's a conflict of interest she was going to take herself out of the decision process but then she walks right into the office and tells her dad When he makes his decision, it better not be hope for the future. It better be her line. Really? Wow. Hope has no chance with these two. Back across the hall in the side office, Katie and Thorne are putting their clothes back on. And Katie is looking for cameras. She's super paranoid all of a sudden. And Thorne thinks it's funny. But Katie explains that Bill has done way worse than that. And Katie just wishes Bill could see that she's not trying to cut him out of Will's life completely. She just wants to rearrange their agreement. Yeah, okay. And then Thorne tells Katie that he might be out of a job soon, depending on the decision Ridge makes. And Katie says, maybe Ridge will ask you to work on the couture line. Yeah, yeah, right. Don't hold your breath. Now we head back over to Il Giardino with Bill and Brooke. Bill, of course, is trashing Ridge. That's his favorite thing to do. And he says Ridge has never supported Brooke or her kids. But soon, Brooke's had enough. And she tells him to stop. Because Ridge is a loving husband and a good stepfather. And then Bill hits the nail on the head. He says, uh, yeah, Ridge is a good stepfather until Steffi pulls on his shirt sleeve. And Brooke tells him quickly that he has no room to talk when it comes to Steffi. Bill admits he had a lapse in judgment, but he doesn't deserve to lose Will over it. And then he's shocked whenever Brooke agrees with him. She thinks that Katie is wrong. And so do I. So do I. People make mistakes. I mean, if you just cut someone off after one mistake, I mean, my God, you would never be connected to anyone. Everyone makes mistakes. So, um, Bill is surprised by this. But Brooke tells him that he needs to step up and realize that a year is a long time and even though he was a good father before that a judge is going to ask him why he was MIA for a year and he better have a good answer that doesn't involve Steffi and then Bill puts Brooke in a bad situation he asked her to help him we all know what Ridge's reaction would be if Brooke helps 
Bill. So Bill tells Brooke that he needs her help, that he's apologized and apologized and it hasn't changed anything. And Brooke says, you have to keep apologizing and and apologizing until the people you hurt believe you're sincere. And then Bill asks Brooke if she would talk to Katie for him. And Brooke says, Bill, uh, our lives are already tangled enough. I can't go plead your case to Katie. And Bill said, it's fine. He just thought Katie might actually listen to Brooke. And then Brooke tells Bill that no one, especially Katie and Ridge, can know they even had this conversation. Bill agrees. He says no one will know. And he assures her he doesn't want to cause her any trouble. Yeah, right. This is Bill we're talking about. Back over at Forrester Creations in the executive office, Steffi is telling Ridge all the reasons why he should choose her line. She does make some valid points. But some points are not. And then Ridge asks her, point blank, are you doing this to get back at Hope? Steffi answers, all I can tell you, Dad, is that I need this more than she does. And then Steffi leaves the office. And Ridge is obviously upset. He's having a hard time with this because he wants to be on his daughter's side. But he also doesn't want to hurt Hope or Brooke. So, he's in a very impossible situation. Back down in the showroom, Hope is looking over one of Thorne's new sketches, and Steffi walks in. And Steffi asks Hope, has she talked to Ridge yet? And Hope looks a little confused, and she asks, "Um, no, I haven't talked to him. Why? Do you know something I don't? And Steffi answers that she is the co-CEO so she has already talked to him and Hope says I thought you weren't going to use that card can you at least not use your influence with your dad against me and then Steffi tells Hope that she's not against her but doesn't she want to take a step back and be a new bride and enjoy her family and Hope really feels like she shouldn't have to stop working to enjoy her family but clearly that's what Steffi wants her to do And Hope really hates feeling like she's in competition with Steffi. And then Steffi says that she made a decision and she's standing by it, but it came at a very high price. And now she wants Hope to return the favor and go tell Ridge that she wants to step back and not expand the line right now. And Hope says, let me get this straight. You want me to go tell Ridge to pick your line instead of mine. And Steffi answers, yeah, I do. And my dad will thank you for it. That's some nerve. Like if all of Hope's hard work means nothing. Back in Bill's office, I told y'all this wasn't good that he ran into Brooke. Now he's sitting there thinking about Brooke and when they used to be together. And and how he has feelings for her. No, you don't. Stop. You cannot have feelings for everyone on the show. Okay, Katie, Steffi, Brooke. No, I don't like Bill and Brooke together. I know a lot of people do. I know tons of people do, but I just don't. I feel like they started out bad with bad karma. And I don't think that they should ever be together. Now we head to the executive office. And Brooke has just arrived back from lunch to talk to Ridge. She's still very upset about what's happening. And she asked Ridge if he talked to Steffi. And he admits that he did. And Brooke says, oh, I see. I see. You already decided. Hope never even had a chance. Oh, I'm sure you talked to Steffi. And she told you what to do before she took herself out of the decision making, right? Look, Ridge. Just tell me straight up right now, which of our daughters are you kicking to the curb? And that's how Thursday ends. That brings us into Friday, September the 7th. The show opens at Forrester Creations in the executive office. And we're with Brid... Bridge. <laughs> yeah, we are with Bridge. We're, Br- <laughs> we're with Brooke and Ridge. And they are still having the same discussion. We're pretty much picking up right where we left off yesterday. 
And Brooke just point blank, she asked, which line is Ridge going to support? And Ridge again gives kind of a political answer. But basically he says that he's not going to kill either line, but that he does want to concentrate on couture. And Brooke is hearing that she's getting more and more angry. And he says that he hasn't made up his mind yet. And Brooke says, Ridge, seriously, you know what I'm asking. And he says that um, as soon as he knows, he'll tell her. And this is, he's in an impossible situation because either one, either way, however he picks, one of his daughters is going to be upset and hurt. So Brooke takes another tactic. She calms down a little bit and she says that she wants to give him some advice. She says that if you take out the lingerie, if you take out the lingerie line, it's no big deal. The customers will just go buy undergarments elsewhere. But if you take out hope for the future, there's no replacing that. I know you're partial to your daughter. I get it. But don't let that cloud your judgment. You have to do what's best for Forrester Creations. Downstairs in the showroom, we're continuing where we left off yesterday with Hope and Steffi having a discussion. Steffi is pressuring Hope to throw in the towel on her line and step away for a while. And I'm sorry, but Steffi has some freaking nerve. You, you don't, I'm sorry, that's not the way life works. You, you don't make a decision and then get to go back and then seek revenge for the decision you made. Like, you, you can't go back now and be mad at Hope for being with Liam whenever you, you're the one who didn't want Liam, right? Like, it, you decided that. Crazy. So, down in the showroom, Steffi's pressuring Hope, and Hope is obviously thinking about this, she's weighing it, and basically Hope says this is, this is exactly what she didn't want. She didn't want this to cause trouble between her and Steffi, and Hope says, look, Steffi, basically, my line is bringing in new customers. Not to mention that the new generation is socially minded. What message is there in lingerie? I, I don't get it. And Steffi says, wow, what if your mom heard you say that? And Hope's like, I would tell her that to her face too. I mean, I would. So uh, Steffi says, look, Hope, I'm not trashing your line. But let's be honest. Sex sells better than lofty ideas. Profits matter. And Hope says, you know what? People matter more. People matter more than profits, Steffi. It's the fundamental difference between our lines. And for that matter, the fundam fundamental difference between us as people. And Steffi looks a little shocked, I think. And she says, look, Hope, you have the life that was supposed to be mine. And I do support you. B.S. B.S. I am calling B.S. on that. I do support you and Liam's family. That's why I need you to support me in this. It's painful and hard to see you two together. But I really need this hope. My daughter is going to grow up without her father in the house. But I can show her what a strong woman can do. Hope, I need you to understand this is all I have right now. I need this. And I'm not letting you take it away from me. Um, I'm sorry. Would you please quit punishing Hope for a decision that you made? You slept with your father-in-law and ruined your relationship with Liam. Okay? Regardless, you made the decision you made. You cannot now take it out on her or try to get revenge on her because... You could have stayed in the fight for Liam, and you chose not to. Now we head upstairs in the side office with Sally, Wyatt, and Zoe. Zoe is worried about losing her new job. And Sally assures her that what she heard is that they were scaling back on a line, not dropping it completely. And then Wyatt, Wyatt says, what are y'all even talking about? 
And then Sally explains everything that happened in the meeting earlier. Wyatt is shocked. OMG. You mean Ridge has to choose between Steffi and Hope? Wow. This is not good. Why does a choice even have to be made? Does anyone know that? And Sally and Zoe both are not sure. And Wyatt says, this is just cruel. They are finally getting along and now they're being pitted against each other. Zoe strongly thinks that Ridge is going to pick Steffi because he's her dad and their blood. And then Wyatt reminds her that Ridge is actually married to Hope's mom. So that makes this an impossible decision for him. And I think Ridge will probably side with Steffi too. Come on. Everyone knows he is. Uh, Sally is actually hoping Ridge picks Hope for the future. Because that's the line that she is assigned to. But she does inform them that she has a backup plan. She has been doing some lingerie sketches on the side just in case. Then Zoe has to take off and she leaves. And Wyatt and Sally start making out. Big surprise. That's that's all they do. I have no problem with it. I think it's adorable. I like Sally so far. So Wyatt is proud of Sally. He's proud that she had a backup plan in case things go, go the wrong way for Hope. And... He asked to see her designs, so she she lets him see her designs, and he is so impressed because the sketches are really good, and they are really good, and that makes Sally happy. Back down in the showroom, Steffi is gone, and Brooke walks in, and Hope tells her everything that Steffi said, and Brooke tells Hope that she cannot listen to Steffi. Steffi has some nerve. Look, Hope, this is not all about work. She would have found a way to retaliate no matter what. Because you got Liam. She is bullying you. And it all leads back to Liam. She put on a really good show. So everyone would think she's so sweet and she wouldn't look like a sore loser. And then Hope asked if Brooke knows which way Ridge is leaning. Brooke admits she has no idea, and Hope realizes that she's the underdog, for sure, because Steffi is CEO, and she has influence with Ridge, and then Brooke says, oh, wait a minute, just wait a minute, Hope, no one has more influence on Ridge than I do, don't we know that's true, you know what, that is true, Brooke has a lot of influence over Ridge, now we go back upstairs, to the executive office. And Ridge asks Steffi, what's wrong? Steffi says, you know what's wrong, Dad? Hope wants it all. That's what's, that's what's wrong. She has Liam. She has a baby. She has a marriage. And I'm just supposed to what? Step aside? Dad, I actually asked Hope to step down and put her line on the back burner. Ridge looks surprised. Why? I don't know. But he looks surprised. And Ridge is quite concerned. He says that this sounds personal. It doesn't sound like business. Good point, Ridge. He says, it sounds like there is a part of you that wants Hope to pay because she ended up with Liam. So true. Ridge is so, Ridge is hitting the nail on the head because this is so true. And then Steffi tells Ridge, I'm not trying to punish Hope. Not exactly. And Ridge says, I know that that it hurts. And I know that you're not over what happened. Winning this would make losing Liam a little more bearable, right? And Steffi answers honestly. Yeah, it would. It would be a side benefit for sure. Dad, listen. My line will outsell hopes. I know it. And Ridge says, Steffi... As CEO, I get it. But as your father, listening to the other stuff you just said, I'm really worried about you. And then Steffi answers that he should pick her because it's her name on the building, not Hope's. And this should be a refuge for her. But instead, she has to see Hope and Liam and the baby every day. 
this is my family's company. And I have to see Hope and Liam together all the time. It's really tough, Dad. Then Ridge's phone dings. And he says he has to go handle something. Is she going to be all right? And before he walks out the door, she actually says, well, I guess that depends on your decision now, don't it, Dad? Wow. This is really unfair of her to put Ridge in this position. I mean, wow. Who would do that to their parent? So Ridge leaves to go handle whatever it is that he needs to go handle. And Brooke storms in the office and she slams the door and Steffi jumps and she just immediately go she walks towards her she's like charging towards her and she just immediately goes in on her and Steffi's shocked her eyes are really big and she she's surprised obviously and Brooke says how did I know you would do something like this play on your father's sympathy to get your way Steffi's shocked. Brooke, that's not what I was doing. Oh, come on, Steffi. Yes, you were. I don't care if you're the CEO. I don't care how many shares you have. You only have those because of some sick involvement with your father-in-law. Shares and titles don't give you the right to manipulate your father. You know what? I am sick. Of the way you treat my daughter. Always trying to ruin her happiness. That's it. I've had it. It's not going to happen again. Do you understand? Do you hear me? Never again. Steffi's stunned. She doesn't even say anything. She doesn't know what to say, I think. And that's how Friday ends. Brooke's delivery could have been better. But what she's actually saying, I don't disagree with. You don't tell everyone you're taking yourself out of the decision and then go to your father and tell him he has to pick you. That is so manipulative and so mean to do to your family. I would never go to my dad and tell him, you're going to choose me over my sister, okay? Period. Like, you, you just don't do that. I And you know what? I feel bad for Steffi because I know she really needs this. And and she made a decision, and it was hard, and I get it, right? I get it. But you cannot then regret your decision and then punish everyone for the decision you made. I'm sorry, you just can't do that. So I'm disappointed because I really wanted them both to have a successful line and to become friends and even eventually kind of be like sisters, but... I don't know that that will ever happen, honestly. Okay, guys, that brings us to the end of the week. Thank you so much for listening. Please get in touch with me. I want to know what you guys think. I want your comments, your feedback, your predictions. Also, I've added a donate button. So if you want to donate to the podcast, that's very much appreciated. So if you want to get in touch with me or you want to donate, please visit my website at theboldandbeautifulpodcast.com. I hope you guys have a great week. I'll be back next week. Bye, guys.